I wanted to, to do something different, but I didn't know what it was. It was a bit frightening. I saw the application in the police notices, and as soon as I read it, I thought, that's me. We woke up to the sound of gunfire around the, the small hotel we were staying in. And my colleague, who was a firearms instructor, looked at me and I looked at him and thought, he's not happy with this, and I don't think I'm happy with this either. The sense of destruction all the way around there. Just block after block of flats that had just been burnt to the ground. And it just went on and on. As we went into Sarajevo, we started to see people doing their normal thing. And that was, that was spooky as well, you know. There was this contradiction between what we just arrived in. And it all happened very quickly. People's images of Bosnia go back to what they saw on television in the early 90s. I expected there to be more tensions, more activity going on. And in comparison with having worked in Ealing in West London, for the past nine years, there is less demands placed on police locally and it's a far safer environment to, to walk about for women and children to walk about than a, a lot of parts of London at the end of the day and there's a lot of misconceptions about what it's actually like in this country. I'd done about 11 years in Merseyside Police. I thought I'd gone as far as I could. This opportunity come up, and I thought, what a great opportunity. My job out here is as, as a human rights officer in the regional headquarters in Sarajevo. When I first came here, my impression was that the local police weren't up to a very high standard. I've worked in quite a few regions throughout the city of uh, Sarajevo, and they are the very professional police officers. And just to uh, talk about the Gazi Bara incident. Yeah, there's a lot of inconsistencies in this particular case. What happens is you get a lot of uh, the public, they come into the local stations and they make complaints about the local police, the way they've been treated, they've been abused by the local police, they've been threatened by the local police. You're there to make sure they carry on working to uh, uh, democratic, a democratic policing style. I, I come from a city, Liverpool. And I think it, it, it suits me far better to live, in, live and work in Sarajevo than anywhere else. You could end up out in a stick somewhere where you've got no running water. Work, working in uh, and living in Sarajevo will not give you the full picture of uh, Bosnia as a country. You can travel across Bosnia-Herzegovina and uh, it's, it's very difficult at times to, to understand where you are. In the Republic of Serbia you have the Serbs, in the Federation you have the Muslims and the Croats and there's a, an invisible entity boundary line and it's not until you, you identify a Catholic church, a mosque or a Serb Orthodox church you have a greater understanding of uh, the nationality that currently uh, occupies the village you, you are in. The minute you get out to the villages and towns is the uh, the destruction that's taken place, the ethnic cleansing. You'll come to villages, half the houses are intact as if nothing's happened, and others have just been totally destroyed. 
I'm a police officer. I uh, have been for over 26 years, and uh, what I do is I train people to, to, to good high standards. How do you think it went? Okay. okay. Nicola, how do you think it went? Okay. What about the guys? Any, any, comments, any comments from the guys? You've been back home and watching the war from a distance on, on TV and through the media. Uh, the representations that were coming through to me were that, that the Serbians were all the bad guys, the Croats weren't as good but not as bad, and the Bosniaks were the, uh, were the, the, the poor hands. And being here, I've realised that uh, they were all as bad as each other and all as good as each other. What I have found is that these guys here are very proactive and very much confrontational as opposed to perhaps Western European police. And what I'm trying to do with in my advice and the tactics that I'm putting in is to try and just temper that a little so they're much more approachable. It's uh, um, so they're more acceptable to the, to the public eye. Uh, but it's very hard to change the culture and very hard to change attitudes. You've got to try and appreciate that, that here they don't do things by small numbers. Um, what, what happens is uh, an operation which would in England take maybe five, six, seven, eight uh, police officers. In here, in reality, it takes in excess of 40 or 50. And they, they do tend to go mob handed. It's very dynamic and very, uh, it's, uh, whoa. <laughs> A bit stand backish when, when you see it. But uh, it's just the way they are. It's just the way they are. And uh, who are we to say that what they're doing is wrong? One of the, uh, the most sensitive towns in Bosnia Herzegovina is that of Srebrenica. There's uh, a project currently being undertaken by the British Contingent Commander, Steve Burfitt, introducing Muslim officers back into Srebrenica after a, a five-year absence. And in the wake of what happened there, this is obviously uh, very sensitive and uh, personally emotional for the officers involved in returning there. Um, the Chief of the police in Srebrenica is uh, eagerly awaiting your arrival and so are all your colleagues in, in, in Srebrenica. This is a very significant day for all these people. They've not been back to their pre-war homes, many of which are destroyed since 1995. They don't know what they're going to go into, they don't know what the, uh, the reception is, is that they're going to get. I'm here to uh, try and persuade these people to go back. We're also here to try and make sure that everything goes smoothly and that they're kept safe and that we give them the confidence that they've got the backing of the international community to help them go back. It's a very nervous, anxious time for them. We're hoping that there's going to be no trouble. We're hoping that their colleagues in Srebrenica will accept them. So it's tense all round. Coming out here, it's, it's part of history making really, and trying to you know, put things back to what they were like before and also to take them a further step forward and try and bring some democratic principles here. We get given some uh, insight and some sort of training before we leave and come out here, but I don't think anything can actually prepare you for what you come and see. 
when you come and see the destruction and the sorrow, really, amongst some of the people, and talk to them and get to understand what they've actually been through. It's the first time this has ever been done and it's going to be tense for both sides because the first step to getting people to go back to Srebrenica and live where they did before the war is to get these police officers to go back so they can provide a sense of security and safety for the returning citizens. I came to Srebrenica on the 1st of December to take over the United Nations uh, mission in Bosnia-Herzegovina office here. And I was told by my superiors, Klein, Jacques Greenberg, my head of civil affairs, that Kofi Annan wants drastic changes here in terms of um, establishing a multi-ethnic police force. <laughs> the most important thing of, about Steve's role in this event and in creation of a multi-ethnic police is that he is neutral. He comes from the outside world. He has no allegiance to either parties to the conflict. And that provides that added sense of objectivity to the entire situation, besides adding the sense of confidence to us in the United Nations that we have somebody who understands policing. There was a lot of initial, certainly I had a lot of initial worries about what the reaction would be when they got together. But they're all police officers and there's that common bond there anyway. And I appreciate there's lots of difficulties that they have obviously got in their own minds from before. But the, the bond is there and uh, something positive will come from it, I'm sure. It's time, the war is over, and the message is let's move on. Let's move on to some kind of multi-ethnic existence, peace and harmony, which is what we are trying to propagate. The experiences that you have in a country such as Bosnia in one year probably outweighed the experience I've had in the Metropolitan Police in the last 10 or 12 years. I really think that I've come back and I've spoken to people. What have you done? What have, what's happened since I've been away? And they have very little to say. And, uh, and I can go on for hours of the experience I've had, how I've learned, how I've developed my policing skills, my interpersonal skills. Um, huge, I feel as if I've come on leaps and bounds. The police officers that we take with us have to have eight years service before they go. There is a reason for that. And part of that reason is we need people who have got something to offer. By eight years service in Britain, people are experienced enough in the various disciplines of policing to be able to say, yeah, I can go somewhere else and I can make a difference. We want to introduce policing into these countries where the police service is trusted by the community. Now, that's the basis of UK policing. We know that. We couldn't work in our own country without the trust and confidence of the public. So we try and introduce that. Now, the experience has shown, after the hundreds of police officers that have already been seconded to these areas, that we do that exceptionally well. Go! 
Cool. With, with, it, with it being Kosovo, there's any amount of uh, munitions knocking about, both K4 and the old Yugoslavian stuff, as well as some of the stuff that they throw together themselves. Our biggest problem at the moment is human traffic. What I want you to do is take your officers and just get the people moved out of the way. Okay, okay. Please. We'll do it. We'll do okay, it. please, yeah, do it yeah. now. Yeah, one of you. Yeah, you have two in my Yeah, you have two in Yeah, I want to know that the people are here uh, We have scenes at home, I mean, obviously, with Northern Ireland. It's the same sort of thing, it's just in a different country. And instead of, instead of having one force dealing with it, you've got, like, 52 different nations here. So you've got this amalgam of internationals. You've got a Bulgarian over there, you've got Germans, you've got a Canadian, you've got ourselves, um, you've got the locals themselves, the KPS officers, and everyone's got their own idea of how things should be done. We actually manage to achieve things sometimes in spite of all the policing experience here as, a, as opposed to because of it, you know. So, no, it's going all right at the moment. We've actually managed to get quite a good scene going for Pristina because we've managed to stop people getting into it, which you've no idea how big an achievement that is. Yeah, you know, it's quite good. Right. Should be that right. building's evacuated. Yeah. Those shops are evacuated. Yeah. Those there because we didn't know about the chemical, and that's the way that the uh, wind was blowing. That's evacuated. No more human traffic up here. Everybody here had a line of sight back up that way. of people came down, took a look at it, and uh, removed the suspicious object. I still don't know what it is. <laughs> Everything back to abnormal. What does it say about policing? Expect the unexpected. Welcome to Kosovo. <laughs> the uh, final shoot for the students from the police school. They've been here on four different occasions shooting and this is the final assessment shoot. The standard's not great. Some of them are very, very good, but some of them on, on the other side are quite poor. The gun handling skills leave a lot to be desired. But, I mean, we work hard, there's a lot of international instructors put a lot of effort into bringing them up to standard. But, uh, the reward is when you see them passing, you see their faces to know that they are actually going to be police officers and not they're patrolling on the streets. This is very worthwhile, uh, particularly for me. I have 17 years service. It was my ultimate ambition to give something back. Point your weapon at the target. Yeah, there's an arm on the tag. And fire two shots. It's been absolutely spot on, it really has. Yeah. Yeah, Policing in Kosovo eventually must be done by the men and women of Kosovo. A new police service has been inaugurated here, the Kosovo Police Service, entirely raised from the men and women of Kosovo. But they needed training. The OSCE in their training school provide the basic training after which these men and women come out onto the streets and work alongside their international colleagues to gain the experience which they need to police their own community in the future. We're the second largest contingent at the police school, and yet the impact we've made is enormous. If we just drive it on the We have a skill, we have a professionalism in Britain that does transfer. We know that. We also appear on the palms of the hands and on the bottoms of the feet. Late and prints are non visible or safe. And here we are, one year later, having now trained over 3,000 new recruits to, to the Kosovo Police Service. Here we are actually taking them one step further into being. A, a responsible, modern police service. And people are starting to say, OK, that was a job well done. And we were part of that.
this city there are a huge amount of false documents in circulation. We've caught a lot of people with false documents, mainly driving licences, uh, but there are false passports in circulation and false money. Please, I need uh, documentation to travel abroad. Alpha 2 India 7, Alpha 2 India 1 over. She asks her, have you any old documentation, any ID card or passport from former Yugoslavian? Are they stalling or are they saying that they're going to bite? Uh, she, the woman there explained to her that here nearby station 4 there is an office who, which issued travel documents. We had intelligence that um, came through KPS circles that uh, this person that we're talking to with now undercover as a supplier of false documents. And uh, we established contact by telephone, uh, arranged to meet, and we've got a cover story. The K female KPS officer is in. Uh, undercover, she's um, in disguise. The suspect has already admitted that uh, they've supplied their relatives with documents, so we know we're in the right place. It's just a case of will they supply my officer with a document on payment. Half of two India 7 from one over. She's now out the building. A quick up some of what the operation was about today, for those of you that, that aren't clear on it. We used a um, female KPS officer who's only been a police officer for how long? Young Chen Viet. One year, since one year. Okay. She did an excellent job. I'm um, living the uh, proverb that you can have a whole police career in one year out here. I'm on my third job. She went in made up, wired for sound. Uh, thought on her feet, established the contact. I've been a, a police manager since 1988. And for me, the challenge is to go back to being a policeman again. So I'll probably end up my mission walking the streets or driving the streets, being a copper. Great. Spend the rest of the day writing it down while it's fresh in your memory. And then we'll look at uh, getting our heads together to plan the next phase of the operation. Basically what's happened now is that all of Kosovo, the majority of Serbs, have all left, apart from Mitrovica. This is the major area for conflict in Kosovo at the moment in time. We have the River Elbow which separates uh, both sides of the community. North side here is uh, the Serbian majority. On the south side there's over 100,000 Albanians. On the northern side uh, there's not really a police force at the moment. It's very difficult. As everybody appreciates, you have to police with consent. At this moment in time, there are certain groups operating in this area who are intimidating the decent people in this area not to cooperate with us. We have a group uh, who call themselves the Bridge Watchers. Uh, they just observe who comes across the bridge. And if they, they need reinforcements in a hurry, they can have up to 500 here. There's people out here carrying guns all the time. We at this moment in time, we can't stop and search them because that would be too inflammatory from their side and there'd be endless riots and there'd be no amount of people killed. Policing this town is very similar to policing in Northern Ireland, but thankfully back in Northern Ireland, it's not to the extent that we have over here. Over here, Near enough, everybody has a gun or access to a gun or hand grenades. You can buy an AK-47 for £150. You can buy a hand grenade for £5. Where conflict arises within Kosovo, this is the area which usually starts it. This is the touch paper which usually happens within Kosovo and then spreads onto other areas. Wherever UK police officers are deployed, then we must remember that was until recently a war zone. There have been real human tragedy there, and life, law and order, everything about society is broken down. And there's a need to try and return to normality as soon as we possibly can. UK police officers are great at achieving that sort of goal. Myself and Fasori are out on patrol and basically watching the traffic lights. Here we have a particular problem because if you go around the corner there's a lot of pedestrians and drivers do 
goes through the red lights quite often. I'm about to finish field training. It lasts uh, 19 weeks in field, and I will be an independent patrol. When they start off, we do the things. Uh, if you're giving uh -huh. someone a ticket, we give them a ticket. They stand and observe. Then as their training goes on and they progress, we basically become monitors, as we will be today. It's got the stage now where Vizuri does, doesn't need me to tell her what to do. She knows exactly what to do, and then she's now doing it. You're doing exactly the same job as all police officers do in the United Kingdom. The difference is here is you're actually teaching the new cause of police service policing work. We're teaching them on the ground. I wrote that ticket and he said thank you in the end. That's right, yeah. I really do like it. Through its geography, Kosovo has traditionally been a trading route, both north to south, south to north, and east to west, west to east. That's a function of its geography, and it was true 500 years ago, and it's still true today. Some of the goods that are being moved, I have to say, are women. We have a special unit devoted to tackling this uh, terrible crime, and they've had numerous successes. X-ray India 51 from Sierra India 10. Say again, over. Can you just slow down a bit? We need for everybody to catch up. Roger, understood. We're going to the Miami Beach Club. The prostitutes are working in this bar. They're all coming from the poorer countries and they know that they can, or they're promised, that they can earn a lot of money in Kosovo. That's what lures most of them here in the first place. We've had uh, operation on this bar before and there's been weapons found inside, so you can never be too careful. Dogs will be doing their work first, and then we'll be going around to check the girls. We're looking for the, uh, the traffickers, and we're looking for the, the guys, the pimps, that are earning the, the big money. We shall take photographs of all the girls, individual photographs of the girls, and their details, and then we'll ask them to come to station one in two or three days' time, and we'll speak to them on an um, individual basis. We see them as a victim, uh, as opposed to a suspect, so we take them under our wing, we interview them, and arrange for them to go to a safe house um, where they're looked after, and at the same time, they arrange to get them repatriated to their home countries. It is a legitimate question when people say, why should we be doing this when we should be policing back at home? Well, I think we've got to look at the bigger picture here, that in terms of crime, what happens on a worldwide scene does impact on us. Drugs dealing, organized crime, trading in people, all these are issues impacting policing within the UK now. That's because of an influence from somewhere else within the world. So when we police in the way that we are abroad, we are contributing, quite simply, to reducing crime on a worldwide basis, contributing to law and order and peace in the bigger scene worldwide.
this posting is quite brutal in places. I've lived in two small villages. The former was like a prison camp. There were no facilities at all. No running water, no electricity, no amenities, absolutely nothing to do. In 27 years walking the streets of Gwent. The skills that I've learned in that environment, I'm able to apply in this environment. I'm in a place now which is considered to be a hardship posting, but it has water and it has electricity. By accepted European standards, it's an absolute tip. By Team Marie standards and UN staff, it's paradise. There are two seasons in Timor, hot and dry and hot and wet. We're presently <laughs> hot and wet. This is actually good though. This, this is not too wet, which is a bit of a bonus. At the station, we have the station commander, Jim Richardson, who is a Victorian policeman from some godforsaken outback called Garok. And I've yet to find anyone on this planet that's heard of Garok. Excuse me? But it's a one-man station and you can see why. <laughs> Willow's grandfather was born there. <laughs> there we go. But his grandfather was born in Rumney, where I'm from. We also have Joe Perez. Emmanuel Bello, the TLPS or Timor Lorisai Police Service. These are the people who are going to run this place when we are gone. At the moment, we have four open investigations which range from a minor assault to quite a serious attempt murder. Joe Emmanuel uh, are learning the art of investigation, the arts of statement taking and interviewing technique. It's a skill that has to be taught from scratch because they've never had to practice this type of interview before, and it has come along very well. We've, we've got an adopted family here. These fellas here like their kids. Um, and I don't mean that uh, lightly either. They, they do everything with us, and that's the way it's got to be. That's the way this, this country's going to, this mission's going to work. It's something that's slow teaching, but it's what we're getting paid for is not only to police this area, but to leave our skills behind in the workplace so the future of this country is in the hands of people who are capable of enforcing the law and enforcing the law fairly and openly. for this posting because it was uh, very unusual, very far away. I'd done some backpacking through Indonesia and Borneo in the past. Um, and it was just something completely different. Um, and I'm very, very pleased I've done it. I'm a community policing officer. I'm in charge of that unit. Still law enforcement, um, but it's totally removed from the kind of law enforcement we do at home. Domestic violence, a result of uh, uh, gambling, uh, debts, and, and the like, build up, and uh, it does cause us problems. It's illegal, but as you can see, I'm not doing very much about it. Um, it would simply cause mayhem if I started coming down here, or the police started coming down here and breaking up what is actually a very social occasion. Um, it would cause problems. Everybody enjoys it. Um, one day we will get round to doing something about it. This is not the day. This is the house where we live. We had it painted. The power is off at the moment, I think. Yeah, there's no power. Power is off at the moment for most of the day, most days. Uh, most evenings it's dark, so you're getting at half past six, it starts to get dark, and... Um, you either got to go by candlelight or go out, really. We've actually got a sink, which is good. Um, a lot of places don't have sinks, and you end up with a bucket. This one, unfortunately, the drain doesn't work too well because there's no such thing here as a U-bend, so it stinks. But we throw bleach down it, and it works perfectly well. And it's just a bit whiffy in here every couple of days, isn't it? The fridge obviously works um, all the time because we keep the door closed when the power's down. 
this is a good standard. Um, we were, this was one of the main selling points when we came here. We came into this, admitted the floor was a bit green because of the, the th creatures that live here. If you're going to have a shower, you quite simply fit this and you chuck it over your head. It's as simple as that. And uh, it works very effectively. And same for brushing the loo. So uh, simple and effective. And you get used to it very quickly. It's actually very, a very pleasant experience because the water's cold and uh, it's usually very hot here. Once every uh, two weeks on a Sunday, we take the orphans from the Catholic orphanage in Bacora to the beach, and it's a real novelty for them to, to get out and, and get down here, and it's considered a, a major away day. <laughs> a lot of sand to cover me, that's for sure. One of the things behind organising this type of community visit is breaking down barriers. The local communities do tend to be slightly suspicious of not just Civpol but of uh, the new Timor Lorosai Police Service. So this uh, hopefully is a, is a means to uh, gain their trust and see that we are human and we, we can talk to people and interact. Lucy, been very successful and we've been operating it every two weeks for the past year and everyone concerned enjoys it and Mr Suko from the college brings food down and it's a good good trip that we hope continues. There are officers here who've had a responsibility out of all proportion to their years of experience back home in the UK. This experience should be built on, it should be used. One of the great things about being contingent commander here is that uh, more than any other member of the contingent, one can watch the contingent members growing, growing in knowledge and experience. It would be a great shame if some of this experience were lost when these people went home. I know from speaking to, to other contingents that police officers come to somewhere abroad, somewhere in the UN, learn an immense amount of things, not just police techniques and, and skills, but also as human beings. They expand. They, they learn a hell of a lot in a very short space of time. If these people then go back to a policing environment at home in the UK where those skills are not used, that would be a great, great shame. It's a wasted opportunity. People here have seen things and done things that people in the UK would have difficulty in imagining.